This is the World According to Zig podcast for October 27th, 2019. My name is John Ziegler. I'm the host of this show where you can still get the truth about the news of the day and the events of my life from a conservative perspective in this world turned upside down. My other podcast is the Individual One podcast. You can find all the information you need about that as well as this show at freespeechbroadcasting.com. That's freespeechbroadcasting.com. This episode of the World According to Zig podcast is going to be a little bit different. It's already different because it's uh, being uh, taped later than normal. Normally, we tape uh, Sunday mornings, Los Angeles time. Uh, This is Sunday evening, Los Angeles time. And uh, in fact, the only reason why we're even doing a podcast for this particular week is it has been such an eventful few days that I absolutely had to do a World According to Zig podcast. Otherwise, I would not have done so because I've had other things going on in my life. And frankly, I'm going to start this show off with a bit of a disclaimer. I am spent. It has been an extraordinary week. I have had a bizarre life, but this week was really stretching it. And, you know, I'm 52 years old now, and I probably stretched it a bit too much. So if I say something particularly dumb during this podcast, I'm going to ask for a a dispensation, some understanding, because as I get get through what's happened this week, I think you're going to understand, and you're probably going to go, Wow, how is Zig even doing a podcast on Sunday evening after everything that has happened? But there's so much to talk about. I've got to get to as much of it as I possibly can, because otherwise it'll be my next week. You know, no one will care. And a large part of what I'm going to discuss is my extraordinary meeting slash interview that went six hours long with former NBC News superstar and Today Show host Matt Lauer, the first time that he's spoken to a media person since his firing in November of 2017. And I will give you all the details that I can about that and all of the analysis of the coverage of that event that you will not want to miss. And yes, uh, for the Michael Jackson fans, there's, of course, a Wade Robson angle because Matt Lauer was the guy who interviewed Wade Robson when he became an alleged victim of Michael Jackson. So everything is connected. There's always a connection to everything in John Ziegler's world. And uh, as has been most of this year, there's there's a connection to leaving Neverland and or Michael Jackson because uh, yesterday was a huge day for Grace Ziegler. You know, Grace Ziegler, my seven-year-old daughter. I am the leader. Do as I say. She's been on this show uh, several times in the past, about once or twice a year. Is Trump a bad guy or a good guy? She's growing up fast, and yesterday uh, she uh, she finished her first soccer season. She's not really good, but of course she got the trophy, which is all that matters. And I, I love this because you know I'm a, I'm one of those people, a conservative, who hates the everyone gets a trophy phenomenon. And she actually she was so excited, so proud of her season-ending trophy, signifying absolutely nothing. Uh, they they had a good team, but there was no championship. I don't even know that they technically kept score. Uh, but she actually says to me, "You know, Dad, they don't just give you a trophy for nothing." I said <laughs> I had to bite my tongue to say, "Actually." <laughs> Actually, Grace, they do give you a trophy for nothing, but it's, you know, what are you going to do? Break her heart because she was so excited, her first trophy, what have you. But that was uh, insignificant in comparison to what the Ziegler clan did last night, which is the Michael Jackson connection. We were invited by Taj Jackson, who's been a guest on this podcast a couple of times. He is the nephew of Michael Jackson. He's been at the forefront of trying to get the truth out about what a fraud the HBO fictional film Leaving Neverland is about his uncle Michael Jackson. And he was uh, very kind enough to invite me, my wife, and our two daughters, uh, Grace and Diana, to the annual Michael Jackson family slash friends Halloween party at the Jackson estate. And uh, my daughter was very excited about this. I mean, she's kind of become a Michael Jackson fan over the last uh, couple of months, especially since uh, a Michael Jackson fan uh, sent her a very nice care package because she had uh, done that uh, video of of, uh, a fake Emmy Award for Dan Reed and the worst acting goes to Leaving Neverland, the uh, Robson and Safe Chuck families. And so so she's kind of become invested in this whole Michael Jackson thing. And she's never been to a, a real uh, party of any sort. It's certainly not a other than like a kid's birthday party. And so um, the, the, everyone got all dressed up for Halloween. My wife uh, was a witch. I was Jack the Pumpkin King. 
uh, Grace, she started as uh, Sleeping Beauty, but then uh, when I realized as we were getting into the car that since my youngest daughter, Diana, was Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, that because Grace looked like the good witch, you know, there's the bad witch and the good witch, because she looked so much like the good witch or a, a good fairy, people were going to presume that this was all a theme Wizard of Oz deal. So Grace decided to not be Sleeping Beauty. She decided that she was the good witch from the Wizard of Oz. And so we go to this party. We we actually had to sign uh, non-disclosure agreements, which <laughs> I, so I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to allow to say other than our own experiences. I think we have some latitude here because I, I just want to thank Taj for inviting us to to the party. It was spectacular. Uh, they go all out. Uh, it was so neat uh, for my daughters to meet Brandy Jackson, the niece of Michael Jackson, who we interviewed on this podcast right after Leaving Neverland uh, aired. And I th- think she was, she at least for me, was the reason why uh, I knew that Leaving Neverland and specifically Wade Robson was a fraud. I knew it within minutes of watching her do a different interview in a video before the movie came out. And then in her presence, speaking to her for about an hour in an interview that we aired on this podcast, which was very popular, uh, I was positive of it because she dated uh, Wade Robson for the key years and for a very long period of time, almost their entire teenage years. And I really wanted my daughters to meet uh, Brandy because she's the kind of woman that I hope my daughters become. And so that was very exciting for me for the, to make that happen. And she was gracious as she always is. We spent a lot of the evening with Tom Mesereau, another guest on the podcast. By the way, uh, Charles Thompson, the British journalist, was also there, another guest on the podcast. It was basically a, a World According to Zig podcast reunion. Uh, but uh, we had dinner with Tom Mesereau and his wife and his six-year-old daughter, uh, and he's uh, awesome as always. And uh, Grace and Diana had a great time. Diana was a little scared because this was a spooky setting, as you might expect. Very spooky. We didn't go to the spookiest parts uh, of the estate. Um, but Diana at first was was definitely put off. But to her credit, she stuck with it, and she ended up having a good time. And she ended up uh, dancing quite a bit uh, on the dance floor. And then my daughter, Grace, my older daughter, you know, she has both beauties and, I guess, uh, guts. She doesn't get the beauty from me. She might get the guts from me. She actually, completely on her own, went up to Paris and Prince Jackson, Michael Jackson's kids, who are basically, I guess, the de facto hosts of this uh, party, and introduced herself. <laughs> Uh, which was quite quite amazing, uh, and uh, and I think something that she'll probably remember more in the future than she does right now, because I don't think she fully understands the significance of it. But by all in all, everyone had a really good time, and uh, we thank uh, Taj Jackson for for that invitation. And uh, and who knows, maybe we'll be able to do do it again sometime in the future. <laughs> Push it up, push it up, let me see your chest. Wobble, wobble, shake, 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 shake,